Hey, James, cheers for coming on today, mate. No problems, man. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Enjoying the sun, uh, which is a, surpri a surprise in the British sort of <laughs> island that we live on. Usually it's like sunny for one day and then hammering it down the next. Yeah, it's unpredictable, right? <laughs> yeah. How are things going for you? Uh, things are going good. Yep. So um, busy, busy week. Um, just uh, picked up my uh, boy from his first day on um, secondary school. So basically, he's only in year five. Hmm. Um, he's only in year five, but he is getting a taster at secondary school at the minute. So he went in for the day and he was a bit ner He was super nervous last night. So um, we just managed to pick him up and he would come out absolutely buzzing, which was which was brilliant. That's um, kind of the the thing with uh, when you're like anxious or a little bit fearful of something and then you go and yeah. do it. And then after you're like, yeah, 100 percent, dude. I'm glad I did that. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean, you're like gleaming, but it must be mad for you seeing your little ones, like your little one going, um, getting a taste of a secondary school. You're thinking, where the fuck's the time gone? <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I had that exact thing, and I didn't know exactly where he, uh, I didn't know exactly where the last nine years, or oh, ten, oh, he's ten in a few months, yeah. and I just, I remember, um, I never forget when, like, one of, uh, when I, when he was a baby, one of our friends who had a baby, he was ten. I was like, holy crap, how's he ten? Now that boy's 10, he must be nearly 20. And I'm like, where the hell is yeah. that all gone? <laughs> he's, he's out on the beers, the other one, like 20 yeah, years old. Funny. And you're like, um, what's going yeah. on here? <laughs> not quite there yet. So obviously uh, we're talking after you've done your, um, well, not exactly the day after you've done your 100 mile um, event. Like, yep. Talk to me about that and what went on there and what was it for and et cetera. Okay. So the 100 mile race, um, so last, in fact, it was last year that I decided that I needed to do something um, separate from the business and something for me. Uh, and I needed a challenge having left the Marines in 2011. I needed something that was going to put me so far out of my comfort zone that, you know, mentally and physically I was going to be challenged. Um, I needed something that wasn't related to work and I needed something that was going to um Proved to myself that I still had the bootneck mentality, but the marine mentality of gritting through something and coming out the other side, still, still going. You know, um, so uh, I did a 50 miler last year, and I tried to sign up for the hundred, but it was fully booked. Um, and I thought, right, do you know what? I, I'll get it done. Um, I'll get it done next year. That's you know something I really want to do. I want to experience. I want to experience what it's like to do a hundred. I want to, to like you know have that appreciation for people that are in that sport. So um, I fucking didn't sign up. And then I and when I went to do it, I left it so late that I was on the wait put on the waiting list, and I was gutted because I thought, oh, well, it's obviously not meant to be. And I thought there's no way I'm going to get off the waiting list because places are like gold dust. Mm. Um, and then I got a text in February this year saying, you're, there's a place for you. And I was like, okay, brilliant. So I tried to pay for it and, and it didn't happen. And I'm a big believer. Something's telling me not to do it. And, mm -hmm. um, and I thought, do you know what bollocks do? You know, everyone does it. They're like, oh, well, I'll just leave it then. Yeah. And, uh, the next day someone emailed me and said, oh, you tried to pay. Did you, did you want this place? And I was like, uh, yes. And I just gripped my teeth and said, yes. And then I was in. Um, and I would have preferred to have had a pl started training in December, but you know, in theory, probably missed out on three months worth of training, um, and kind of threw myself into it really with uh, having so much going on at the same time, which we could sort of come on to later. I wondered whether it was a good idea, but plunged myself into it and and, and started training in February. Yeah, I mean, what was the what was your like training regime like for for an event like that? Because obviously. <laughs> Yeah, difficult. Yeah, really hard. That was the thing. I I didn't know exactly how to train for a hundred miler. Like I know how to train as you build up for a marathon. I remember my training for my fifty, and I just thought, you know what? Uh, I haven't got as much training as I want. I've got a ton of going on. Um, at the time, my partner was pregnant seven months, and because she was so advanced, it, I guess she could have gone into labor at any point. Mm. So um, I think what was really important for me to um, understand is that I had to be within sort of 10 minutes of being home, so to speak, to ready to take her off to hospital, should, should she need to. So um, with training, I couldn't actually go in the downs, south downs. Um, I 
run the most monotonous loops around Bexhill and Hastings doing the same runs over and over again with um, £20 in my pocket and a taxi firm on, on fast dial should I need to <laughs> get back home. Yeah. Um, so my, my training, my thought process was get as many miles in my legs as possible. And bearing in mind, I hadn't run from April the year before, uh, 2016. So I hadn't run for nearly 10 months. So um, I guess I just started with some five milers, eight milers, 10 milers, and, you know, no, just very, very quickly getting up to a standard. Yeah. Did uh, you um, like sort of do, obviously you probably didn't, but did you do like a sort of a test run beforehand just to see? No, no. It just so, went no, in there. So, yeah, I just went in. I like I knew like I didn't if I if I had gone for a test run straight in and thought, let's see how many miles I can do in six hours, it would have just it would have injured myself and I would have ended up being crippled. So I thought the best process was like I always say to my clients, start as a beginner and let's progress through. Um and progress through, you know, uh, and and that was that. And the miles went up and up and up and then I started hitting the twenty twos, the twenty fours, the twenty sevens. Uh, and then my last training was a 30 miler, but there was no, uh, to be honest with you, dude, I like between February and June, which is for February, March, April, May, June, what's that, five, four and a half months. Mm. Um, I didn't run anywhere near what I wanted to, you know. Um, so the things that were getting in the way, I was writing my book, I was building up a new online business. Um, I, Jemima was pregnant, so we were trying to get the house tidy. We were trying to like make sure that she was okay. Um, I was trying to deal with the offline business because obviously Jemima was about to come out. So we were making sure that we were instructors and stuff that was going on. Yeah. Um, and there was just a lot happening. There was just, fuck, honestly, it was the busy, one of the busiest times going on in my life. We, we, we had loads going on. And in between, I was having to find four to six hours to go running, um, which I guess in a way was bliss because it gave me time to think and to time to focus. But again, was taking me away from everything else. Yeah. I mean, um, what was your thought process like when you were going through the the hundred mile run to a uh, hundred mile race? So, obviously, I'm assuming from the first ten miles, you're thinking, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I so to be honest with you, when I when I actually went into the run, I was pretty relaxed about it. I thought in my head, mentally, I definitely got this. Like I I know that I'm mentally strong enough. My engine is strong enough. Um, but I had issues with my knees and my hip flexors in training, and I thought. If anything's going to stop me doing it, it, it will be my body. Mm. Um, but but as I'll explain, it was quite the opposite. Um, so my thought process was that if I could hit 20 miles every four hours um, and then allow for fatigue, I could do it in 24 hours. And uh, <laughs> I got smacked in the face with that one. Um, so I, I went off too fast. I did the first 20 miles in three hours, like 45 um which is way too quick haven't yeah. thought that thing now i kind of should have been hitting that around five hours to be honest with you um so that was quick and then i ended up hitting 40 miles in eight hours and then i suddenly hit my first wall um and started thinking i've gone off too fast here um and, and i and i was starting to suffer big time um but the, between mile sort of 36 and 46 um it was pretty brutal, to be honest. I, I already, I was such an early stage in the race. I was getting twinges in my hamstring. I was, my, my back was, um, I, I don't know what it was on either side of one of my discs. I, don't, I couldn't have the backpack resting on my back. It was that painful. Wow. Uh, and I was, mate, I was in a world and I was like, how that, like 60 more miles to go. Uh, it's like brutal. Mm -hmm. Um, I managed to get myself to the halfway point where I met um, a couple of guys that I knew who um, helped me just sort of reorg, refocus, you know, have a have some pasta, have some hot chocolate and tea, and just like I managed to get some a twenty minute rest in there, you know, refocus me. Mm. Um, and, and then I went off again, and the next leg I I hit pretty pretty hard, and and then I hit the worst spot um, probably in my life. I would say at the mile 62, um, it was the most darkest, it was probably the most darkest hour probably mentally I've ever gone through. Um, and I've gone through some things in the military uh, and I, I've never quit 
and but I've never come so close to quitting as well. And um, I was at the checkpoint thinking, how how the fuck am I going to keep going? Like, mm. I don't know if you remember the end of the London Marathon. It was all over the news how some guy helped another guy who come in. He was totally limp. He was yeah yeah his, his legs gone all over the place and mentally he was f- f- gone. He was yeah. fucked. <laughs> And that was almost me there. Like it, it was, it wasn't the fact that I, I didn't have the want, but my brain was not coping with the demands of the run. Mm. Uh, I wasn't able to eat anything I put in my mouth. I'd have to spit out, um, and I just had so much pain going in in my brain. Like it's really hard. And there was a guy that I'd met earlier in the race, and he rocked up and he was like talking to me, and um, he said to me. If you quit in an hour, you'll kick yourself because you'll know that you could have keep, kept on going. Yeah. And that stuck with me and resonated with me and, and helped me get me through the next five miles. He he walked with me for the next hour and that helped me get my brain back in shape. And I decided that I was going to walk the next five miles because I needed my body and my energy system to settle. I needed everything to settle down. Mm. Um, and it worked. Like it, it genuinely worked. I got to the next checkpoint. I saw some family. He went. He went on ahead because I was holding him up. But he, he, he was brilliant. Got to the next checkpoint, and because I had set with the body, I was able to eat. And I, I, I ate loads, dude. Fuck, loads. I just <laughs> for my face with like jelly babies, sausage rolls, like pasta. Um, and then I met a group who I pretty much stayed with to the end. And you know, the night slog was tough. By, by the time I got to the 67 mile mark, um, which was the checkpoint after my darkest fucking point, I, I still had 14 hours worth of running to go. Yeah, man. Uh, and it wasn't the distance that got me because when you say you've only got 32 miles to go, it, like to be honest with you, it doesn't sound too bad. No. When you figure out and you say to yourself, you've got 14 hours to go, that was that's what emotionally broke me down. I was like... 14 hours like yeah. that is no. that that's fucking insane and and that and, that, and the battle just carried on dude you know the, the battle was ups there was downs there was tears um and, and i got to the very final checkpoint with four miles to go and the group that got me in i told him to go because i couldn't wait bear on my left uh on my left foot and i had to walk in the rest um so i just i just relaxed i knew i had time in the bag i didn't really care about the time i just strolled in I had to come down the, uh, a whole gully. It was probably about half a mile down on my bum because I just couldn't put any weight on my ankle. Um, and, and I had these walking poles, which one of the lads had lent me and, and got myself in. And it was 26 and a half hours in the end. Yeah, fucking hell, man. I mean, what was it like when you when you passed the line, obviously, after all that battling and plugging through and even when you're turning up to the finish line and you can just see it and it's there? Um, it, it, was, it was really emotional because I remember I knew the route for my 50 miler. Yeah. So when I got to the very top of that that little gully that I was just talking about, um, you can see Hampden Park's track, Eastbourne's um, running track. Mm. And um, I remember seeing that on my 50 and going, oh, my fucking God, get me. The, that's amazing that, that I can see the finish. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. But I still got work to do. And as I was getting closer and closer and closer, it <laughs> The final mile and a half seemed like another 10 miles. It was just like, <laughs> oh, my God. Because you go past Eastbourne College and then you go past Eastbourne Hospital and you go back on yourself mm. right round to the track and it just went on and on. I was like, you've got to be joking. Like, where the hell is this finish line? And then I saw the big yellow sign that said, finishes this way. And I saw Jemima and we had a cuddle. And then I, I decided that um, I would run around the track because I wanted to finish strong. Um when I got in, I just let it all out. I was just emotionally wrecked, and I just buried my head into Jemima's arms and just <laughs> and fell asleep. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it, it was emotion. It was amazing. It's one of the best, one of the best moments of my life. I think I would say crossing that finish line. Um, I don't think it's really hit me. It's hit me a little bit now. We're talking, but yeah. it really hit me fully of the magnitude of the task that I did and and actually getting through it achieving yeah i mean i think that's one of the things as well it kind of shows like if if i if you put it in this way like you've gone through some of the darkest stages in that race and come out the other side yeah being emotional 
but now you can kind of, you're, you're proud, you, you feel good, you've achieved something massive. Do you know what I mean? Whether it's for yourself personally that someone else may be like, well, it's not that much of a big deal. But yeah. at the end of the day, what you did was... Like, I tell I you what, it's, it. it's, 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 like, I want, that's what I wanted from the experience. Like I said at the very start, I wanted to be challenged. I wanted to be pushed out of my comfort zone, and I was. So I, I achieved my goal in doing that. Mm. Um, I think it's going to make me a much stronger person um when it comes to my mentality and my mental strength um and i think it's going to prove to hopefully and and i to be honest with you i didn't realize the res- um i didn't expect the ex- response that i kind of got from the run i didn't expect everyone to be so like like inspired mm. or um or moved by it I, I i genuinely didn't and like when i went to sleep on sunday i woke up around four and when i turned my phone on like my phone had a meltdown, like all the messages, everything. And I, I read through every single comment and every single and every single message that, and I replied to everybody. And uh, I was just so overwhelmed. I, I, like I genuinely was so grateful because as I was running, so many people were messaging me saying, keep going, you got this, keep going. And, and obviously as, you, as <laughs> the time goes on, I'm deteriorating from the smiles to like pure, <laughs> pure happiness. <laughs> It's like when you go out on a night out, you start nice and fresh, having a few drinks, and then uh, all of a sudden <laughs> you're rat assed at the end of the night. Um, and it, and 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 I was just deteriorating, and I and I was so pleased that I could have inspired so many. So many people I don't even know have messaged me saying you've inspired me to do something, and I, it was just it's just it's an amazing feeling. It really was. It's something that I personally wanted to do has managed to have an influence on other people. Yeah, I mean, um, massive hats off to you for that. That's all I can say. I, I wouldn't person. Well, I, I'm interested to try it, but now you've explained the experience. It's kind of you know you didn't sell it very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of those things. You I, and um, Paul McCleary, who's um, who's an ultra runner. He's a top ultra runner in Hastings. He summed it up well, and he said that it takes a particular mentality to get through it. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter whether i've been in the marines it doesn't matter what i've been through it doesn't matter about anybody it's what and i think it very much comes down to that night run it takes a particular mentality to finish it and i nearly didn't and i don't think i would have ever forgiven myself even if i went back and did it i don't think i would have ever forgiven myself for not doing it um and i there are some incredible incredible people out there that are that achieve that achieved a hundred miler and, and they do, and other people do more. Some of them are doing four this year, um, which is beyond belief, yeah. which is incredible. Like, I'm just like, what the, why mental, mental. How did you deal with the sleep side of things? Obviously, because you didn't uh, get any sleep, I assume. With no. The time going. no, I didn't know. And I didn't have much sleep the night before. Um, obviously having a newborn, I think somebody summed it up well, when we're running, it's kind of like that deep fatigue you have when you have a kid or you're running to trying to run a business. Mm. Um, and I think mentally I've been so preoccupied by, um, trying to build up a new online business, trying to bring up a newborn, um, that I think that it ends up, it just, drains you like like it just drains you when you work you know i work a good 12 to 14 hours a day most days like during the week i'm up at 4 30 every single morning and i'm bed at 10 and yeah. out of that i work quite a lot of that you know i do get some time off during the day and we spend it with family and stuff but i think i think if i did it again the week before leading up to it i'd make sure that i got someone to cover my shifts so i was sleeping tons and mm. and some people might say well it gets you used to it but like the last the last leg of the race you kind of you, you need to be like some guys look fresh as hell <laughs> just i literally look like i've been homeless for like fucking 6 weeks and then decided to do the 100 mile i you know i was baggage but i guess my prep was never fully uh, what it could have been mm. you know um so what's your online business about what's happening there like um so the online business is um so there's well there's one and then there's one gonna be formed at the end of the year there's two so the first one is um dedicating um it's dedicated to a specific market and that's men over 35 now i help out a lot of guys but I run programs simply for guys over 35 that are massively struggling with um, 
self-esteem, self-belief, motivation, accountability. Um, I'm trying to get people to be the very best version of them, versions of themselves. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get them to um, ignite the fire in the belly, to, to, to do achieve massive things, you know. Um, I feel for, for a lot of guys because, you know, in the 20s, a lot, a lot of guys in their 20s are kind of fit. They don't really need to worry about the metabolisms or the responsibilities of life. Um, I think they kind of get to 30s and then it's very much about having children, grow, um, getting their job, um, working hard, providing a, a roof for their family. And, you know, and what slowly happens is that when obligations like that start taking over, looking after the family, uh, having children, trying to do well in a job, trying to get through a job, people tend to forget their health and fitness. It kind of gets pushed to the back. And, you know, a lot of the guys that I speak to um, are struggling with that. You know, we like on the program that I'm running currently, we we take on probably 20 guys a week. And I speak to every single one of them and every one single one of them says the same thing. You know, it's kind of like it's time to change. It's time to prioritize myself. And that's what I do in effect. I'm kind of like the online coach or influencer or, or their online accountability or their online motivation. And that's how I see my role within this online business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting take on uh, um, like because you've you've got the processes of life quite down yeah. to a T in the sense of like the twenties and that it's all kind of, you know, go out with the lads or whatever, party, don't have to worry about nothing, go to the gym every now and then and you can, you know, maintain a healthy yeah. lifestyle. But when you do hit that thirty, you know, that thirty plus and you realise, you know, I've got a wife and kids to provide for, I've got yeah. a house to look after and that sometimes fitness help being healthy and that yeah. can take a backseat and the excuses kind of come out like, oh, well, I can't go train today because I've got to do this and yeah. I've got to cook this. And it's kind of about... It's and excuses. Then, yeah. it's, like you just said it there. Like, even when I speak to the guys, they're telling me why they're not doing it. And they just go, it's just a fucking excuse at the end of the day. And <laughs> and they they know it. And, and just by simply a five minute conversation, they've realized that they've been making excuses for the last four or five years. Hmm. No, that's it. I mean, and then that kind of uh, click happens mentally where they're like, all right, look, I'm going to dedicate this period of time to doing this. I want to get in shape. And then everything else sort of uh, snowballs with that. The mentality changes, you know, to an extent. Obviously, there are some people out there that can look in tremendous shape and still not be happy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Someone someone joked this morning and said happiness comes with, with within and it, it's a fucking cheese ball line but do you know what it's so true mm. um I, I, and i think that's the guys that are on their second week with my program at the minute have all started saying that they're starting to feel something different but they don't know what it is and they're starting to feel happier you know and that was amazing to see there's been some really positive posts this week um up in our private group and th- those guys are now starting to experience what it feels like to be the best version of themselves again. They were all starting to experience um, what it's like to have the fire in the belly, to be the best version of themselves, to be the best father, to be the best husband, to be the best worker. And we're only two weeks in, and once I've finished with them, they're going to feel the best they've ever felt. And it doesn't matter if you're 48 or 18, okay, they're going to feel amazing. And they're going to feel like at 48, 45 to 48 i've got guys who train with me offline who i say they feel in the best shape of their life even better when they were in their teens even better when they were in their 20s like right now who feel good because they're doing stuff and they're being positive and they and they have structure and they have identity and i think they're starting to find find identity through fitness and health yeah i mean that, that's the massive plus as well i think from for exercise and um you know, it releases all this chemical stimulates you. The only thing I don't understand is those people that kind of treat exercise like it's a uh, an added plus, like it's a not a hobby, but it's like the first thing they sacrifice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. And 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 it's the first thing to go. Um, I think w- with fitness, um, it's the first thing to be dropped. You know, when you look at anybody who in their monthly 
in their monthly outgoings, when when people review their finances, what they do is they write down everything. So you have things like um, you have your Sky Telly these days. You have um, your finance for your nice car. You know, you maybe have a, a luxury shopping budget. You maybe spend two hundred pound on yourself and clothes and stuff. And like, I mean, I don't know. Everyone is different, aren't they? Every household has a budget for something, and something's different. Mm. People earn different amounts of money, and different, and people prioritize. Now, when I, what, how I feel like it, you should be looking at this list is that. Well, let's have a look. Without my health and fitness, um, I'm going to be like shortening my life by ten years. So, really, in in my eyes, fifty, whatever people charge, depends where you come from in a country, like month a, a little monthly um membership cost to look after your health and be a part of something it should be top of the list should be above the nice cards should be above the sky box o- office should be uh, above the uh the handbags or the dresses that you buy at the weekend you know and i and i find that maybe that's missing in society in society at the minute whether people really do prioritize it like you could do it for free like in theory you and me shouldn't be in business it's on yeah. youtube it's everywhere like you only have to go online to do something but what stops people from doing it is people can't be bothered and it's like don't get me wrong i'm the same i can't be bothered sometimes it's motivation like people miss mo- motivation okay um and people miss accountability uh and people forget to prioritize themselves mm. And, and, and that's and, and and that's where we I think sometimes it goes wrong. Do you think um, like the structure of their their lives as well can play a massive part? So, for instance, for yourself, you're getting up at four thirty. You know what you're doing. Boom, 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 boom. There's no kind of excuses there except then you take the accountability. Like I should have done this. I didn't yeah. do it. Now I blame yeah. myself. Whereas a lot of people don't have much structure they just come back from work and go oh, just i might go you know we'll see how i feel yeah, i think so i like i'm i'm a big fan of structure and it's probably because of my military background um so with the lads that we're working with online um we have this thing called the golden hour now the golden hour is getting up <coughs> excuse me an hour earlier than you do normally so let's say um you get up at seven and you go to work at eight so what in the instance this these guys are doing is getting up at six. So within a world that is moving so fast, and if you blink, you'll miss a ton of action. You need some time for you and to be able to maintain a, a strong mindset so that you're not getting stressed and frustrated with everything. So I feel that you need to be able to clamp down on a strong morning routine so that when you walk out the front door to go to work, you are in a really good place. Now, the the golden hour, you're kind of looking to get your workout in, some stretching, some breathing, you know, whatever floats your boat, whatever calms you down. You kind of move your phone out of the way. There's no work, no laptops, no TV, just you to develop yourself. Within that, you can look in your diary. You're kind of planning your day. You kind of got your food prep ready for the day. So you're getting everything together. So when the rest of the world wakes up, you've got an hour on the rest of the world that's woken up so you're not getting stressed because you're rushing you 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 don't you do have time to have breakfast okay and get out the front door and and you're focused and what that stops is the emotional eating during the day or the emotional um reactions that you have because you're so focused in the morning you go out and you've got all of your food prep because you did it night before and you spent a little bit of time and effort and commitment in doing that I think what happens is a lot of guys and girls go out the door stressed, school run stuff, and then they start picking and they start emotionally eating. You know, guys get home, they've had a, a stressful, that stress is just multiplied by 10 throughout the day and they get home and nothing we do other than having a beer or two. Uh, and then one beer leads to two and then three and then you do this Monday to Friday and then you think it's Saturday and I'll have another one. And then before you know it, you're just like spiraling out of control. No, that's it. I mean, like you said, um, I mean, if you've, like yourself, you've probably studied uh, successful businessmen's habits um, and they're all about getting up, you know, three hours, four hours, yeah. five hours even before the rest of the world. And, they're, yeah. you know, they're doing their, like you said, their golden hour. Yeah. You've got Alan Sugar who's like working out on the uh, cross trainer or on the bike for like 45 minutes before 
you know, he even starts his day. That's like his morning ritual. Obviously, he's got 100%. luxury of money, but yeah, uh, you know, he's the, got that and, money because because he's got up at four thirty every single morning for 20, 30, 40 years. Mm. He is where he is because he's dedicated to a structure and and and, and kept consistent throughout the, the whole of his life. He's done everything with with pure structure, and it's the same with people that are looking to get fitness results. If you're looking to lose weight, if you're looking to tone up, if you're looking to change your lifestyle, you have to make that commitment to get up and beat the day. You know, um, those people who work from four thirty, by the time it gets to nine o'clock. You are almost looking at having done three and a half hours worth of work. Like, mm. you know, like if you go from four thirty to two, you could knock off at two if you wanted to and had done a full day's work. But you still like how I look at it is you still got another six hours worth of work, uh, whether it's your fitness or whether it's your business, or whatever it might be. Yeah, I mean, I, I massively uh, like the philosophy and that style of living. I think it's it's one that's gonna. Because when you go to bed at like when when it gets to nine ten o'clock in the evening, yeah, the, like the world kind of does stop. The business world stops to an extent, you know. Yeah, they go home, go to bed, they get up, they get on with the next day, and they still get their eight hours or whatever, you know. And I think it's, um, you know, just getting up early and getting that, getting those hours before anyone else, is is what separates you know the people that are achieving and the people that aren't in my yeah. opinion you know yeah I, I mean we had a guy on a podcast called um jimmy saunders and he's a busy it guy. he's trying to develop himself as a pt um and he finishes he goes to the gym at 10 o'clock at night 10 to 11 at night after a full day's work and having still pt people and still done his business and then he gets home and preps his food now he might not have a lot of sleep but he's dedicated and yeah. he's looks like he's dedicated it and and that is the difference between success and and, and average if you if you're looking for if you like you have what well, you have to put this into perspective is that what do you want out of fitness like you know you, people listen to this are likely mums dads you know we're not training to be bikini models okay and i always say that we're mums and dads that are trying to find time to live a healthier life live a better life so like Getting to two to three sessions for me, as if a mum or dad gets to two to three sessions a week, for me is a massive success. Mm. Like, you know, if you go to even if you go to one session, it's a massive success. If they're being productive, okay. Now, if you are wanting more, so if you are complaining because you don't have a six pack, if you're complaining because you're not in a size 10 and you know you're not putting the work in, then that's where you can't really complain. Um, and there is always there was always an excuse but there's always an answer for that excuse like there's always something it's just the way you look at things you look just got to look at things slightly different and open up your mind and creativity yeah that's it i mean like money charting or whatever like you said you it's all pros and cons to anything like you do so um you know for like routines or whatever it's like maybe you need to sacrifice something that's not beneficial yeah. during your day for something that is beneficial whether it's not watching an episode of breaking bad or whatever yeah. that's yeah. you know 50 minutes yeah. long and you work out instead or or yeah. work out whilst watching breaking bad you know <laughs> yeah I, well it's, it's there's nothing to stop me doing that it's not there's nothing and you're absolutely right it's just about adjusting it to your lifestyle um you've been writing a book how's that going is it finished the book yet? is done the we are literally uh, the second proofread has just been done um, I need to write the um, so for the front covers done. So you know the, the usual bit that script that's written at the very back of the book, which tells people what the book's about. Yeah. Um, I've just got to do that and send that to the graphic designer for the book cover. I've got to write an introduction to my planner, and then that's it. And then it's ready to go. Um, it's called uh, It's a State of Mind, mm -hmm. uh, and it's basically. Um, about the struggles of men over 35 and what they go through. Um, it's about how to tackle it. It's about how to face it. It's about to doing something about it. You know, it's pretty blunt. <laughs> it's yeah. quite, it's quite a blunt book. Um, it's self help. Um, but it's not cuddly. It's straight to the point, um, which I feel sometimes we need to use in, in, in this day and age. There's a time for, there's a time for sensitive and there's a time for let's, 
buck up our ideas and let's get shit done. Yeah, I mean, I, I massively agree with that in the sense of so many people are kind of sugarcoated nowadays. So, and and they can't hand like not can't handle some brutal honesty. And the way I look at it is, there's there's obviously a professional way to do it, um, but you know, you put yourself across, you give your opinion. In, yeah. in its brutal form and then you get that reaction and usually some a lot of people will be like they blame that reaction on you for telling them when really it's kind of them breaking down maybe emotionally because it's true and it's themselves does that make sense it does and i like um i was having a chat with a guy called jamie alderson the other day he, he come onto my podcast and he's very much well, I mean, we have similar mindset, I guess, and in and, and the way that we approach things. And I think that I'm a big believer people who are in the position they're in and it's and it's no one else's fault but theirs. Um, and that is quite hard and that to take and it might trigger some people. You know, I, I kind of feel like people can slip in to the state that their bodies are in or mindsets are in because maybe we dwell too much. Maybe we mope too much. Maybe we're not. Maybe we haven't been encouraged enough. Um, whatever the reason, I feel like, you know, if my business was in a poor state, I would say that was down to me. And it's not a case of turning around saying, well, does no one want to train with me? It's because I haven't put myself out there. You know, I, I'm a big believer in putting myself out there all the time and like just showing the real me. And you have to, I have to keep doing that. That's my business. That's my job. But if I didn't do that and no one was coming through the front door, that's my fault if i was two stone heavier that's my fault um it was my fault that i wasn't fully prepared for the 100 miler i like i knew the risks at the time and i took them and i, I just scraped through you know and if i hadn't passed that 100 miler it wouldn't have been the trainer's fault it wouldn't have been the the terrain's fault or the weather's fault it would have been my fault yeah yeah i mean um touching on the sort of social media aspect of things i can i can relate because i probably put out i mean i've been told i've put out i put out quite a negative um or an opinionated view out on social media and i always say to my mum like i don't really care you know i'm just like whatever but yeah it probably has dented my business slightly but i accept that you know yeah. for what i'm if what i'm going out there and doing you know if i'm going to put stuff out there i accept that it can jeopardize my shit because people are um influenced by by social media whereas like now us talking you know you could probably say i'm, a, I'm an all right guy like and the same as yeah. if i'm face to face with people but on social media sometimes i can be over overly opinionated and i reckon that has probably dented my uh, i think when you, to an extent i think when you come to post something so like i think that sometimes something might trigger you for example, and you want to get that out there. So I don't know, wh wh whatever it might be. Hmm. Uh, um, so I I have a, uh, like I used to be like that. I used to like be quite brutal. Um, but no, I guess how I look at it is that nobody wants to listen to too brutal. There's a way of writing it, I think. Yeah. Um, and there's, I think when you write something and you're emotionally involved when you write, and then there's a thing when you write something and it's constructive but positive yeah. and i find that when i used to be in those moods i would be so i would be in a bad mood you know the blood's pumping to the heart and you're writing it out so what i do now is i write out when i'm in that mood i write something out and then i delete it because actually i've got it out of my system mm -hmm. i don't want to post that and then i'll leave it 24 hours and then i'll look at how i can construct that and yeah i'll look at how i can construct that and um and i th and i think that it i came out a lot better for it and my posts come out a lot more constructive um and, and a lot more sort of positive side of things but just trying to emphasize the point i was trying to make yeah so it's the clearer state of mind isn't it as well yes you yes know, you're not pumped and fueled full of just Exactly. animosity or whatever you know stress you have rage, to inspire whatever. people you have to inspire people but you also have to get that message across yeah. and yeah. like i mean i i I'm, i've got no idea what I, I very rarely scroll through my personal page so I, i'm i've never seen any of your 
like the the rants. I've seen it one or two, but I <laughs> like the, 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 when you. I think when we rant, I think we have to be really productive with the rant. Mm. Like, like there has to. It's kind of you have to have clear purpose, but you have to also be able to inspire people off the rant. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a statement I made like five minutes ago saying you are where you are because it's your fault, but don't worry about it because you can still got time to change, yeah. you know? And it's kind of like the, 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 there is a way forward. Don't worry about that where you are. Let's figure out how you got to where you are. Let's look at those trigger points. Let's see what happened on your journey in the last 12 months to get you to where you are now. Mm. And let's try and change that. Let's try and turn that around. So how can we do that? So you get quite emotional, so you eat. All right, so what, it makes, what makes you emotional? Okay, well, you know, uh, the kids run stresses me out. You know, my partner, relationship. Okay, so let's look at that. Let's get up an hour earlier to plan for the school run. And let's, you know, th- let's introduce the golden hour. Um, and then you've got an hour more time. And you actually feel a bit more controlled. And, and you know, and that can make, have a positive effect. And, and, and it's just a case of reaching out and looking at people and kind of going, do you know what? I really want to, I just want to rant to the world and, and no one wants to listen to rants. No. Um, and, and I think if you, if you as a person can look at how can I make this a positive thing, I, I think you'd end up winning. Yeah. I mean, I think um, it's weird how you can say something and almost make me think about what I've been posting, like yeah. whether it's over a period of time, I think, yeah, I may have ranted, but I've never given a solution or yeah. like a, a positive after the yeah. negative, if that makes sense, yeah. kind of like. 100%. I think you just have to be calm with people. Like, like not everyone is you. Not everyone's me. Like, for me, fitness is everything, and I can't understand why everyone's not trying to get fit or not committed. But I do understand because real life sucks because the kids want to be annoying because they don't want to go to sleep because they're not well because – you've been charged 300 pound from the bank for something and you don't have the money at the minute you know understanding people is fundamentally under like people are underrate the importance of understanding people Mm. okay when you understand people and understand real life and what is actually going on out there in the real life um it, that is the difference. Like I understand that my clients are going through a bad time. I understand that motivation is low. Yeah. So let's do an eight week in house program. Let's get everyone focused. You know, it's the summer. It's hot. People don't want to train in this weather because it's too hot. Um, okay. So let's like, you know, let's make sure that we tell everybody that and we're going to make sure there's a longer breaks. So you don't get so hot. Make sure you bring more water. We'll go for a swim after whatever it might be. I think getting into the mindset of, of people real people and and that's what we have to understand not everyone is a robot not everyone is a pt and and the pts of the world need to understand that fuck do you know what if you're having a bad day you're having a bad day just don't beat yourself up Mm. no um do you think as well like behind every strong man's a strong woman that's what we're saying do you think like he would have got to where you are without the support of, you know. Which is listening in another room, so I'm going to say 100% yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yes, 100%. Um, uh, like, because we all need our support networks, you know what I mean? 100%. So, so like, for me, um, I wouldn't be where I am now without without Jemima. That's mm-hmm. like, she is um, almost my saviour. She was with me the whole, the whole way with the 100 miler, even with the baby there as well. Um, and... Yes, I would fully agree with that statement. Um, I, I like I, I can't even emphasise how important she is in my life. Um, so those brownie points must be coming in as she's listening in the other room. <laughs> but no, I genuinely mean that. I'm, I like I I'm 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 lucky. I'm, I'm seriously lucky, lucky guy. Um, every decision I want to make, like what you just talked about, getting those rants out, saying what you want to say, you know. Jemima calms me right down. She goes, "Do you want to do that?" And I'm like, "No." So <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she, she binds me. Yeah, I think that's nice. Like, kind of uh, having having a woman in your life, or whoever it may be, that kind of just centers you again. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. can be up in the clouds, effing yeah. blind, and then they just yeah. bring you back down to reality and say, yeah. "You know, stop being an ass." <laughs> just like yeah. well, if she's saying it, 
I probably am being it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So you get it done. Um, what I was just your... want to take. I, I, like I want to take over the world twenty four seven. Like I like. Let's do this program. Let's do this program. Let's franchise the business. Let's like. She's like fuck. Rain it in. <laughs> <laughs> Love yeah. that. Um, so, what was your second online business that you're looking into doing, or do you not okay, want to so, let too much uh, out? No, no, it's fine. I've got nothing to hide. So, uh, at the end of the year, I'm, I'm going to be looking to work with other fitness professionals, um, other PTs, mm-hmm. to help them build their boot camps, their fitness businesses. Um, I feel over the last two years, I've dedicated a hell of a lot of time around some very influential people who uh, who have helped me to understand that um, uh, that I'm a businessman, that I'm a salesman, that I'm a marketeer. Um, and that I've looked very much into all of those things because you can be the best PT in the world, but unless you know how to show people that you are, you, it's pointless. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? You, we all know how to tell, show people to squat. We all know how to deadlift. We all know how to show people how to do a press up. Um, and, and we could be the best, best thing. We could be the best trainer in the town. You, we could think we're the best, you know, um, and we can get the most out of people. You know, and uh, uh, unless you can get that across and show the world just how good you are, then it's point like you'll never you be a be a lost talent. Yeah, it's uh, you've got the talent. It's just about implementing it, I guess. And, yeah, it's, uh, it's I'm about assuming that you're yeah. kind of help going to help people do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, um, if I had a thousand pounds to spend either on a uh, training course or on a marketing course, I'd go marketing course every single day, mm. every single day. Um, and, and, and what I want to do is, um, let me, th- let me put this in a way. So I want to work with, um, PTs who want to develop their business. So I want that to help them grow. I want to help them build their, build their mindset so that they get into the good routines of getting up early and dominating the, their local area that when they look at things, they look at things in three years time, five years time, 10 years time. 15 to 20 years time and and that's how the mentality I want to get into so many people are about the like are trying to look for the quick market like they're looking for the quick market they want to help everybody but they're not strategizing they're not using tactics they're not marketing correctly they're not you know they're not saying the right thing they're not and and I just like I want people there's so many great PTs out there 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 are hundreds of great PTs out there and they're going to end up being lost because they don't earn enough money to live on, on their business, on what their passion is. And that would have been me unless I took my action that I did two years ago and, and got some help. And uh, and I think that I, I, want P, I want PTs to be able to do what they want to do as in their passion, because not only will that help them, it's going to help all of their clients be amazing. It, you know, it's going to help so many more people who are struggling for help. Like there's people who are out there right now who are desperate for help, but the PTs don't know how to get to them. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to say it. They don't know how to bring those people in. They don't know the systems that they need to put in place. And I massively want to help them. No, that's cool, man. Like, I'll probably be look. I'll be interested in that. Awesome, dude. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> as, um, as much as as uh, much as it pains me to say. I'm just used like I know how I know how to do the marketing and the, everything, but it's implementing it in a proper way. Yeah, it, like it's the same as it's same as your clients. I always relate everything I do with any PTs. Like I have a couple of PTs that I speak to. I kind of mentor them along now. I don't charge anything. I just work with them because I enjoy working with them. Um, and I say to them exactly what I say to my clients. You're procrastinating. All you're doing is that you have 101 great ideas, but they're they're nothing because you're not doing anything about them. Like, if you if you started one of your ideas right now, it's going to take you a year, okay? And in a year's time, you'll look at it and go, "Fucking my business is buzzing!" Like, you know, because I started, Mm. because I literally started. You know, my online business. So this is procrastination for you. Um, I went to America um to watch uh, a seminar an online seminar in california and i think it was november 2015 um and i come back all hit pumped up yeah let's do this let's rock and roll and it was and i tried some other bits and pieces and i didn't commit to it uh, and it was a year 
before I committed to anything. And then I started doing some stuff and then it went down a couple of months. And it's only in the last three months that I have fully, fully committed to my online business. You know, I've got a target of where I want to be at the end of 2018. That's my first checkpoint. My next checkpoint is the end of 2020. And then my next checkpoint is 2025. Um, and, and, and along the way, you know, I've got those same things for my offline business. I've got um, I, I've got goals that I want to achieve by the end of 2018, by the end of 2020 and the end of 25. And it's just a kind of like looking beyond, dude, it's like looking beyond like tomorrow. It's like, what's the plan? What is the plan? And, and then what set me up is that am I going to be taking fitness classes at the age of 60 with no teeth, bald, fat? And is anyone going to still want to come to me? <laughs> Do you know? Yeah, but yeah. Like, I can't take them forever. So I'm hiring coaches so I can develop those coaches to be the best versions of themselves and help them with their fitness businesses hmm. and as well as working for me and helping all my clients. Yeah, I think it's just about uh, taking action on, on your ideas sometimes. and Yes. Like, uh, but being I, fully I, committed. It's fully committed and going in like, you know, deep, 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 get in there. Know the work that you've got to do. Hustle the shit out of it. Just, just like someone losing weight, you know what you've got to do to work at it. So let's get it done. Let's dig in deep. Let's let's go for it. Like you know, what have you got to lose? Commit, 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 and you reap the rewards. So what? Um, I, I know you said you've only got an hour, so we'll wrap it up in in the next ten minutes. But um, what motivates you to keep going and keep plugging forward and keep achieving? And... Because I would say, I would say all my life I've been an underachiever always. Um, you know, I joined the Marines. I did well in the Marines and I started achieving, build some confidence. And I never, ever thought I'd work for myself. I never thought I would do well. And I never dreamed big enough. But now I've learned to dream big enough and I want to see if I can do it. I, I like I'm not I'm not driven by money whatsoever. And I, I like, you know, and I genuinely, genuinely mean that if I've got money in the bank and a roof over my head, and enough to support myself for three months should I go out of business uh, and I've got enough to support my children. That's all I'm interested in. I mean, like, if you won the lottery, what the fuck would you do with all that money? You'd go travelling a little bit, wouldn't you? So your life would improve a bit. Like, to me, I want to build the biggest franchise of boot camps in, in the UK. Like, so with Body Shop Fitness, I want to spread that around the UK. Now, part of me doesn't want to because... <laughs> it's going to involve a ton load of hustle. Mm. Part of me wants to because I want to see if I can do it. Like, I want to see if I can do it. I want to see if I can get to the very, very top of my game. You know, I, I want to see if I can change lives of people who are trying to get fit. I want to see if I can change the lives of people who are trying to create businesses. And I want to leave a legacy. And I think when I, like, we're all going to die. I think when I die... I, I want to have played a part in someone's lives, and I and I and I think it's le it's legacy over like over income. Like if if I die today, I feel like I would left some sort of legacy for people to go out and be the best versions of themselves. If I die in thirty years, I I would love to have left a legacy to a hundred thousand people. Like you know, not necessarily <laughs> online. You know, like I would I want to touch as many people in their lives as possible to be the best version of themselves, whether they're PTs, whether they're females, whether they're males, whether they're parents, whatever they might be. Yeah, I mean, um, talking to you is like talking to an older version of me, really, because I've got the same sort of ideas. I was going to say talking to a younger version of me, but you might have been like, <laughs> not understood understood my compliment there. But yeah, oh, got it's, it. it's got um, it. you know, for me, like I, my my whole branding for example is because i want to open you know gyms across the uk for example yeah. but yeah. it's about working out how to fucking achieve it which you know so what are you doing about it so if i said to you what are you doing about it now what would you say fuck all <laughs> so do you know nah, the big nah, thing nah. that you do? I'm, I'm doing stuff obviously like um i mean i'm currently working at uh freedom leisure in bexhill yep just to top up what I'm earning business wise and then invest in that money in myself to, you know, better myself more. And I'm reading uh, some books now 
that are kind of helping me in the way I think, you know, because I've struggled with my own mentality yeah. and, and kind of just, you know, like I know all the, uh, there's certain things that I haven't implemented and it's my own fault, for example. So uh, getting up that hour early, the golden hour, yeah. like you said, I'm just trying to work out that, you know. Just Can you imagine if you it. spent an hour a day for the next five years on dedicating yourself to that goal where you've been five years? How old are you? 25 fuck man so you got so much time <laughs> like yeah. you got so much time so you spent an hour a day for the next five years i can't my maths is shit but that is a lot of hours mm. you'll be there like i i could promise you 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 would be there but like literally get up at half five half five to half six is dedicated monday to sunday to achieving that goal like if if, if that's what you really wanted and you spent all that time in five years' time, you'd have at least two to three gyms. Yeah. It's, if uh, not more. No, I agree. It's just the excuses that get in the way. And I'm it's just the time, dude. It's luck. just the time. When did you set that goal? Uh, when I first started, when I first become a qualified PT, which was, when was that? in 2000 and what year are we in? 17. 2014. Okay. So you've wasted three years. Pretty much, yeah. So, like, I mean, that that's like three, six, nine. That's nearly... That's nearly 1,100 hours you've missed out on. Mm. So now you have to do two hours every morning to catch up those three years and then, and then go do your – but that's how you look at it. Like That's how I looked at my online business. I wasted a whole year. I, I wasted a whole year thinking about it, yeah. waiting for the perfect, the perfect marketing funnel, the perfect strategy, the perfect scenario, the perfect program. It just doesn't exist. You start and then you – Develop, mess up yeah and then you then you learn from that and you mess up again and then you learn again and then you mess up and then you go no that's it i mean um it's like i said they're all just my own excuses and i know they're excuses so at least i'm kind of taking accountability but now i need yeah. to make that action happen i mean podcasting cool. as well i want to i want to go forward with that as much as i can of so what, would, what so people. what are you doing about that oh, i've just been networking with so many people like, right who are coming on who yep. are going to be coming on. I've got um, some woman who's a Hollywood producer who's going to come on. And I'll, right. for that podcast in, there's no specific genre for me. It's just right. I want to hear people's stories and backgrounds, yeah. you know. So. Do it, dude. Honestly, book, book yourself. Like my podcast now, so when I did it, I, I wasn't as proactive. I was exactly mm. the same as you. And then I, I fucking messaged, I messaged the body coach. I messaged David Beckham. I messaged John Terry. Um and I send them a message every day until they reply. And yeah. I'll keep doing that until they reply back to me. And be bold. Like, be, be like, you know, I'm my podcast, the book now for the next, I think, two, two months. Um, I've got, I've got people on. Um, and, and if you don't ask, you don't get, you know, you just, and that's how I look at things. You just, you just don't get. And, no, and that, that's it. I mean, I've been doing doing the same, messaging big people, yeah. spamming the fuck out of Twitter. I tell you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, do it, honestly. do All it. Right. Um, but I, I'm interested in like authors as well, book writers yeah. and whatever. But I'm just there to to connect with people and and kind of try and work them out. Like all these people that are in success, what yeah. they all have in common, yeah, you know, things yeah, exactly. like that, as well as their stories. But we've been talking 58 minutes. I know you're a busy guy. Um, that's fine, dude. We'll I've got a couple off. of minutes. I've got like five minutes, so right. We'll, we'll, sweet. Right, you. I'm going to let you motivate the people that are going to be watching. So okay. To All right. You, to, this is your salesmanship here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now on the spot. So, wh what are we motivating them for? What to be? Do, do, as as in, um, let's say just to achieve, to achieve okay. whatever it is in their life. Okay. So the first thing that I would say to let, let's look at this as if though I was speaking on a consultation to somebody, mm -hmm. um, I would ask you what you wanted to achieve and be specific about what you want to achieve, write that down and then do what's called reverse engineer that. So you look at the very end state about where you want to be. And then you're going to work backwards at how you're going to do that. So if you let's say, for example, you need to lose three stone. All right. So you want to lose three stone. Realistically, like how long is that going to take? How long are you prepared to commit to that? What steps? How much are you prepared to invest in that? 
Mm. So you have to look at all these bigger pitches. So it's all well and good saying you're going to lose three stone. But can you like, you know, are you prepared to, to get the workouts online and work by yourself? Do you need to hire a coach? Do you need to join a boot camp? Do you need to find out a nutritionist or a, a nutrition spe- specialist? And I would look at that end goal, work backwards and find out what tools you need to get there. And then I put a time scale on and a deadline for you to start because it's all well and good saying, do you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Say by, let's say you want to do it today. So with June the 16th, let's say by Monday, the 26th of June, you are going to start your process. Okay. And, and, and that way you hold yourself accountable. Put it on Facebook. Say on Monday, 26th of June, I start my new journey for six months to lose three stone and every single day I'm going to post how I do you know I've, I've joined I, I don't know I've joined a gym I've joined Body Shop Fitness I've joined whoever I've joined James or JB and they're going to help me and, and every single day you hold yourself accountable if you I want you to remember that this is about you and that this is like the benefits of doing this and why you want to do this so it's the old um, whys so you write down why you want to achieve this. And it might be because you want to set a good example to your children. It might be that you want to concentrate finally on some time for yourself. It might be um, it might be just time to dedicate some, um, some time to your health. OK, whatever it might be. Write that down. Put that on your fridge. Put that on your junk folder, uh, your junk folder, your junk cupboard. All right. Where you put all your junk, which hopefully you're going to throw away. Stick that on the mirror in the bathroom. Stick that on the mirror, okay, on, on in your bedroom. So that everywhere you go, you are consistently reminded why you are committing to this six-month journey, all right? I promise you it will help. Find the worst picture that you have of yourself, the one that you hate. Get a photocopy of, and stick it right next to that why. That is the person you don't want to be, okay? This is the reason why you're doing it, and then put that around the house okay you then have got a reason why you want to do something you then have a visual image of what you don't want to look like you then have started a journey that you are on and that you are blogging and if that doesn't motivate you to get to the point where you want to be like I would then maybe incorporate some lessons in therapy to to deal with the mental (laughs) stuff because like if you do not want to improve yourself for that emotional trigger, whether it's the kids, okay, whether it's for yourself, okay, and loving yourself again, I like I, I don't know what else you could do to motivate yourself. You know, it, it's tough. You've got to understand that you are gonna hit walls. You're gonna understand that you're gonna have shit days. You're gonna have to understand that it's not gonna go to plan. Mm. But then you have to have the attitude where you overcome that. And that fires you up to then go, no way am I quitting. Let's go for the next thing. You're going to have to, when people, it, it's cookie day or chocolate day in the office, you're going to have to say no. When everyone's going on the piss, you're going to have to say no. Okay. When people are saying, we're going out to McDonald's, you're going to have to say no. And, and, and you're going to have to learn to do a lot of things. And, and you have to allow yourself to be a beginner at the very start. Yeah. Okay. You have to remember this, this is a six month journey not a 10 minute journey. Okay. You are doing this over six months. That's a lot of weeks. Okay. That's hard. That's a lot of weeks to get through. The first week is going to be hard. You're going to go with through withdrawal symptoms. You know, and you're going to start getting used to things. You're going to build up habits. And I can promise you, if you think about the hundred mile race that I just run. And when I came through that finish line, the feelings that I felt were so overwhelming that it is worth every single bit of hardship that I went through for 26 and a half hours. The result at the end of the six months is going to be worth every single no that you've said. It's going to be worth every single little bit of dedication you put to yourself. It's going to be worth every single bit of discipline that you've shown. Because when you get to there and you take those pictures and you put on the dress that you want, that you've bought yourself, that's four sizes smaller than the one that you started on, you are going to be in dream world and it's going to be worth every single bit of pain that you've gone through so i've just cuffed that so i hope that's right <laughs> but that that that's kind of like my mentality that's kind of to, uh, i think we need to get married <laughs> <laughs> but I, I kind of like that 
that's what I say to my clients. Like, yeah. like you know, when, when I'm working on, I don't do PT because I don't have a lot of time, but when I do do PT or when I work with somebody, that's going to be a long out, a long process. That's kind of like what I go through. And, nice. and by the end of it, they're usually in goose pimples and ready and fired yeah. up, ready to go, you that's know, it, and, man. and just be the very best version of yourself. That's, that's all you can do. And if, and if that means saying no to people, if that means getting rid of negative people that are in your life that are not appreciating the fact that you are doing something for you and they keep saying, come and have a drink. Oh, forget about that diet. Come and have a drink with us. Oh, forget about that diet. Come and have a McDonald's with the guys. I'm telling you, they are not the people that you want to be around because they're not showing understanding towards what you as a person are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's quite hard to say that because some of them might be good friends. You know, I've got rid of people that used to be close to me, but they're not because they're, they're not on my path. Yeah. They're, they're simply on the same path as me. And I don't want to surround myself with people that are not on the same path with me because I feel awkward when I say, I don't want to drink. I don't want to go here. I don't, I, I'm on food program. I've got to go running training. No, I can't come and chill out down the pub and have some lunch, you know, I want people to accept me for me and you want people to accept you for you and your challenges and what you want to achieve. And, and, and I think I'll finish on that before I waffle on. Yeah, I mean, by doing that, you eliminate some of the barriers anyways that people yes. are going to put up. Some of be the, the person you want to be. Just Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and then share your world, your world and your time with the people that support you, that matter to you, that are proud of you for what you are doing. And, yeah. and and, I, and, I, and, and they are the people you will then become an inspiration to your friends because then they will look at what you are achieving and they will look at those pictures in six months and go, fucking God damn, you've inspired me. Show me the way. And, and, and then you're in. The ripple you're in. effect. Yeah, honestly, it's like just be the best version of you. That, like, I probably should have just said that, but just be <laughs> uh, just the very best version of yourself. No, like, man, mass massively inspirational what you just went through. I'm not even lying, like inspired me. <laughs> Thank um, you. That's the truth of it. Um yeah. if if you send me your like Facebook um yes. page yeah. link, what yeah. I'll do is copy that in. So if anyone wants any inspirational um posts or, you know, to be in contact with you just or reach out whatever. To me, dude. Like, yeah, I like I people are surprised when I say that I phone them to talk about where they are. Like I'm I'll happily get on the phone with anyone for five minutes because I think it will make a difference. And, you know, um, I'll always happily do that. No. All right. Um, well, I'll talk to you off camera anyways, quickly yeah. if that's all right. Yeah, of course. Um, cheers for coming on. Massively appreciate well, it. Massive speech at the end there. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank you, dude. <laughs> all right. I'll stop recording. Da, 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 da. Just got to get this to work. All right. Stop it now. Sweet. Happy.